Okay, in this video I'm going to get uh, into dealing with assets within Edge Micro, how you can preload like a whole product master file into Edge Micro so it knows what your items are, so you can search based off of certain attributes of those uh, of those items. Um, you can get a t uh, read a tag list or cycle count of your known tags and different ways to, to export those. Um, before I go into the product itself, I'm just going to be showing you through this interface. I'm not going to do a video of the actual, my hand moving around and stuff. But um, on the device itself, I have, if I go into it, this is a file manager that comes with it. You'll see there's folders in here. Oops. Clicked on that one back. So let me just roll down. There's one called Edge Micro. This comes with the product. Um, that's where you can put your product data that you'll import and when edge micro when you do a, a read of a tag list and you want to send output them it goes to this folder so you can grab them and, and and email them and so on so we'll talk about the import part for a second i actually have three files already in here which i'll show you more about in a moment um two assets and one's actually a g10 one but this is where you would store your product master so with your different descriptions and what we call descriptors if it's got color size uh, whatever style any of that information as the headers you can put all those in there as a csv file and i'll show you within edge micro uh, where and how you can input them so let's go into edge micro here the application itself Now, first, if you remember from the last video, um, I had some extra data in there. Also, in the last video, I showed you how you can change all these buttons, that, uh, change the names of them, and so on. Um, but just to give you an idea, I have assets kind of already in here, along with uh, some descriptors. So if I click and hold on any of these, and I go into the details of it, you'll see I happen to have a descriptor called yellow, which would be... You know, something that I added, but let's start over, right? So I'm just going to show you where you can just do a refresh of the system here and get rid of that data. And that's from the settings tab. So this is where you change what those buttons look like. And also down here where you can clear the product data, you get a warning message. Hey, everything's going to get cleared out, including uh, serial blocks and all that stuff. So I want to continue. Yes, I do. So now when I go back, if I work with assets, you'll see that there's nothing in here. Starting over, starting from scratch. Um, even my descriptors, manage descriptors, there's nothing in there. There's nothing that says color or anything like that. So if you're doing something one at a time and you wanted to add an asset, you can certainly on the device, click add asset. And you can type the asset name or the license plate name and all that stuff. Or you can scan the barcode of it, right? I showed in the last video. And you can choose save. And you can keep adding assets and adding assets. And then, and then you can individually go into these and say, you know what? I wanted to add, maybe you want to add a descriptor or something. There's no descriptors there now. So if I go back to the previous page. Click on the menu option here, manage descriptors. Again, just extra information about the tag. I can click add descriptor. And I can say whatever I like here. What do I want to be? Color, right? So now that's added to that particular, uh, that's an option for my assets. So if I go back into this, click and hold. And I choose edit. You'll see that color is now an option there. And again, I can type all this stuff in. Um, I can choose save. And now Edge Magic knows about this one asset. That's it. So you can go through this or you can do a whole tag, read a tag list and say save on all of them and bring them in that way. But what I wanted to show is a way to import this information. So I chose those three files. So here's the first file. Um, this is the and I have three, it's a CSV file. I have three items in here. Actually, it's the second file. Oh, here's the first file here. Let's go one at a time here. I'm going to bring in this one first. 
this one, I have three items in here, has to be uh, two rugs and a computer, right? Those, those are the asset IDs. That's what's basically encoded in the tags, or I'd want to encode. Then these are the descriptors. I got type, manufacturer, size, country of origin. So, and you can have whatever you want in here. Um, so if I choose to import this file from here, you probably saw that option here, import from the CSV file. So let me just bring in all my information. I want to type all this stuff in. So I import. It shows you, brings me right to that import folder. Which one do I want to bring in? Here's that first one. We bring this in. Click and hold. It gives me an option. Do I want to append, like add on to maybe other assets or other products I already have in here, or do I want to replace them? You know, in my case, I just want to replace. I just made that one earlier. Let's just replace it completely. You sure you want to do this? You're going to replace your previous information? Yes, I want to do that. So now, guess what? That, that one I typed in before, that TB, whatever, is gone, and these are the three that are in that CSV file. And... More importantly, all the information for those are brought in. So if I choose to edit on this one particular one, the type, the manufacturer, there is no size for this particular for the laptop and the country of origin. Those are the descriptors that were part of my CSV file. So they're brought in there automatically. Uh, just to show you the other ones quickly. Uh, this was a rug, right? I think this one's got a size on it. And there's this other information as well, so there's size. So that's all in there, all right? So you can preload it with hundreds, thousands of items. So the question is like, all right, well, what? why do I care so much about bringing in these these items? Well, when you do a read tag list, if you just, or a cycle count, whatever you call this button, you have the option to read everything or just things that the system knows about. So right now I have it set up to like, you know what? Do not read unknown tags. So that means if you read a tag and it's not one of those three, or in your case, you could have 3,000 items saved on here. Uh, in my case, if it's not one of the three, then don't, don't reset, just ignore it. Don't put it in there. Okay. And I still have it set kind of low at 10 dB, but that's fine. So I'm going to hit start. I have some tags here on my desk. Let's do start. And it read those, and I'm actually hovering over a bunch of other tags right now that are not in my tag list, list at least not yet, and they're not they're not being saved. Okay, they're not even showing up. So I could choose stop here, look at my count. I can start again, and so on. Um, I could clear it, obviously. Um, if I like my cycle count or what I just read, if I want to save it, I can go up here, and I could choose save to file. You put in the file name, type it in there, and it'll save it to that to that output folder that you can then email or do whatever you like with it. So as far as the output folder, that could be configured different ways. I mentioned this briefly in the previous video. First, this is the configure save file layout. And this is something you probably go into like once and really and set it up the way you like. But once you have your field descriptors defined, like right now. That file, if I were to save that file, you'd have all this information in here, EPC, timestamp, and all that. And at the bottom, guess what, are those special fields I just added, uh, type, manufacturer, size, country of origin. But I, in the, when I save this output file, I, you know, some of this information I really don't want. So I'm going to go back to the top. And you can just turn these off. Like partition, I don't care about that. Filter, I don't care about that and so on and so on as you uncheck them they go down to the bottom of the list so i turned off a lot of things that i really don't care about i would not want saved in my file and now i'm just kind of down to the last few time stamp like when, when was it was it read you know that's good information but i don't want that bit to be in my first column i probably want asset id so the asset number itself so i can move that up in the list um and next maybe i care about the type then maybe I care about the size after that, and so on. So you can change the way this uh, file is going to look. I could choose save. Um, you can also, if you kind of mess this up or you're not sure, you know, you want to start over, we have an option within here to reset the defaults. We'll put everything back to the way it was. But for me, I'll just hit save. 
So now it's only going to save that information um, when I when I create an output file. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show, oops, in the let me go back in there. I go back into settings and configure save file is the file type itself. So and that's a settings tab here. Um, we default to text, but you can say, you know what, I even my output file, I want that to be to be CSV or maybe I want it to be JSON or, or whatever you like. OK, so you can choose different options there. So it's easily uh, for you to import that into your into your uh, system. All right. That is that. So I would only get that information when I read it. Going back to maintain assets, I probably saw this as an option here. I have these three items now, but you know maybe I want to add. I have another file I want to add, right? So you can you can clear this out and start over if you like, or if it's another file, it's like you know what I want to impend. So I go back to import CSV, and I want to take this uh, file number two, which file number two is this one. Different information. There's cameras on here, one, two, and three, uh, and I have different descriptors too. Uh, owner and resolution all right so let's move this out of here and let's import that that was number two and i'm going to choose append so is this going to add on to what i already had so guess what i have those three original ones and then there's three more that are camera and so on so if i click an add on here You'll see even my descriptors are brought in along with the original ones. Okay, so I can I can use the ones from before. These are the ones in my new file. So the owner and resolution are brought in there. I can change the way my file layout is. I can have owner brought up there, you know, and all that stuff. All right. So now that these are known tags, guess what? If I do a read tag list now. I have these tags also sitting on my desk, which they were not seen before because they weren't known. But now, there they are. They show right up. Cameras one, two, and three. Other advantages of having the known tags in here in the list is when you do like a seek and find. If you know the asset ID, like I could type in maybe I want camera one. But if you remember, I have two cameras with a resolution of 180. So I just want to find the closest one that meets that uh, the resolution requirement I need. Or maybe I'm looking for a rug, and I just need a rug that's size 10 by 10. So you have the option, since they're brought in here already with the descriptors, you can actually search by any of this information. So if I chose resolution, and I typed in 1080, and I chose find. I could have multiple ones around here, but it's going to find the closest one and it'll direct me to it. So I don't have to waste any time. So you have that option again, since they're loaded in here already. Okay. So that more or less covers what I wanted to for this uh, one video on assets. Next one, I'll get into more G10s. Um, stay tuned.